Well, I'm here today with Martin J. Cowling of People First Total Solutions, uh, who's here for the National Conference. And uh, we're going to talk with Martin today about lessons from the Australian bushfires and what the nonprofit community needs to know. Uh, it's June, and this is the, uh, the start of the typical uh, uh, disaster season in the United States as wildfires and the threat of hurricanes along the Gulf Coast uh, makes this an, a very important time to be talking about emergency response and coordination. Martin, what are some things that the nonprofit community needs to know uh, as we get into the season? I think the first thing is that we need to be um, practicing our emergency management plans so that we actually know who's responsible for what. So if an emergency happens, you don't have the agencies looking at each other going, I thought you were responsible for water. I thought you were responsible for mobilising volunteers. I thought you were responsible for getting the food. So people need to be very clear about their emergency management plans. And the second thing is that they need to be clear that they stick to their part of the plan so that you don't have one organisation buying double the amount of food and another organisation forgetting to do their part. So people need to say, OK, this is my plan, we're going to stick to it, we're going to do it well. Great. So I know that there was, uh, uh, the fires in Australia were uh, um, um, you know, tremendous loss of life and tremendous uh, uh, tons of activity between the government and the, uh, uh, the organisations out there. Is, is there any lessons for non-profits coordinating with the government? Um, for us, the government and the not-for-profit sector work very closely on emergency management, which is, I think, sometimes different in other parts of the world. And um, I think it's one of the, it's a good model that we've actually got, is that we actually have state plans that the not-for-profit sector slot into and are part of. They have very clear um, roles in that. And from our part, from me watching it, it seemed to run very smoothly. People seemed to know their part, seemed to know where they were meant to be, who was meant to, to pay. The government's response was swift. The government's response was supportive of the not-for-profits and the communities, and uh, the organisations didn't feel there was demarcation issues, you didn't have the government coming in and suddenly saying, well, do it this way or do it that way. They let the plans roll out. There wasn't sort of last-minute changes. Great. And related to that, sometimes during, uh, when, there, when, there is, uh, uh, when there are disasters and you get lots of tremendous response from volunteers who want to get involved, Nonprofits and emergency organizations often are left with uh, uh, tons of willing hands and not that many ways for them to get involved. Uh, today, uh, in the United States, we're certainly gearing up for uh, what's going to be a summer of service initiative through United We Serve. Uh, and I think there's this expectation that a lot of nonprofits may see perhaps more volunteers coming through their door than they're ready to handle. Do you have any insight in what nonprofits can and should do to prepare for that crush? We have, we have a challenge because the reality is if somebody comes to volunteer for six hours or eight hours, there's not a lot that people can do. And many of the people who did the counselling support at the bushfires, well, they're all trained. And so you couldn't just have people turn up off the street and say, hi, I'm here to provide counselling. You know, we had to say, well, look, you know, these people needed training to do this, these people are accredited to do this. So the, the challenge is, what do you actually do with 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 12,000 people? So I'm willing to give a day or six hours, let me feed somebody. And you've already got a room full of people feeding people. So I think organisations need to be thinking through, first of all, what do we do in that emergency situation? What do we do with those people in a way that values them processes them quickly without them feeling like, you know, I'm wasting my time here. But also saying to them, look, there isn't a role for you at this stage. There is another role, however, maybe coming back next week, maybe praying, maybe giving money, giving them some sort of tangible role they can actually do. The second thing is the challenge with the, the days of service or the hours of service that different people in the world are doing is that, again, many not-for-profits are not geared up to knowing how to handle people who turn up for six hours, five hours, four hours, eight hours. And so my challenge to not-for-profits is to actually sit down and look at their projects. Every organisation has things that need to be done, could be done, and actually break them down and think about what are some things that we can give people who turn up for four hours? What's a project that we've been dying to get done that we can chunk it down so people can come in for four hours? There's a famous story in Australia of the painting wall. It's actually a true story, but it sounds apocryphal. About a hospital that had so many volunteers coming in to do projects, they didn't know what to do with them. So they created the painting room. And a group of volunteers would come into the room and paint the room. Did a great job, had a good day, went home. The next week, the next group of volunteers would come in and they would strip the paint off the wall. They wouldn't be told what they were doing, they would just come and strip. The next week, another group would come in and say, we've got a room, would you like to sand the walls down to prepare it for painting. Then the next week, another group would come in and say, let's paint the room. Paint, strip, sand, paint, strip, sand. Went on for two years, till a group came back that had already painted. And they went, hang on, isn't this the same room? Because the organisation didn't 
sit down and think through creatively what real jobs can we give these people? What projects do we have sitting here that we can give these people? Great. Well, thanks so much for taking time to talk to our audience today. Thanks, Robert. All the best for Volunteer Match.